the cost, the crime, the corruption, and the cover-up. But now we know that he cannot protect our people or our country. We've just received these documents that Trudeau has been covering up for years. Documents related to a massive security breach at the Trudeau government's most sensitive laboratory, where the most dangerous viruses and pathogens are studied and handled. We have learned that the Trudeau government's head of pathogens was collaborating with members of Beijing's People's Liberation Army who are responsible for bioweapons and bioterrorism. We know now that uh, a People's Liberation Army official was able to gain personal access, walk in the door, look at computers, and have access to all of our most important vir virological secrets. Let me, if you think any of this is hyperbole, read the report yourself. This is from government documents, the Trudeau government's own documents. It says here on page 142, Winnipeg lab scientist Dr. Chu, special pathogens unit, the top person in that job, according to documents on page 242, quote, represents a serious and credible danger to the government of Canada as a whole, and in particular at facilities considered high security due to the potential for theft of dangerous materials attractive to terrorists and foreign entities that conduct espionage damage the economic security of Canada, end quote. It states further on page 239, investigators assess that Dr. Chu communicated with foreign entities during her trips to China. The evidence obtained from interviews and from information collected from the electronic content of her devices reveal that this is indeed the case. As a subject matter expert with access to sensitive information and dangerous materials, Dr. Chu presents a realistic and credible threat to Canada's economic security when conducting repeated and clandestine meetings with foreign entities, end quote. Then it says Dr. Chu conducted joint research with the Major General Chen Wei of the People's Liberation Army, who according to page 236, is a noted top virologist at the Academy of Military Medical Scientists and is China's chief biological defense expert engaged in research related to biosafety, biodefense, and bioterrorism. Bioterrorism, end quote. And these are, def these are do documents, this is right out of the government's own documents. Trudeau, what did he do when he found out about this? Did he immediately inform Canadians of the breach? Did he fire anybody? No, nope, no one was fired. Did he call an inquiry to get to the bottom of it? No, nope, he didn't do that either. Instead, he covered it all up. He defied four parliamentary orders to release these documents. When the speaker tried to get them, he sued the speaker to cover this up. He said it was all for national security, but well, we know from a committee composed of four members of parliament, including one liberal, and three judges, and I quote, the, the information appears to be mostly about protecting the organization from embarrassment for failures in policy and implementation, not legitimate national security concerns, and its rele release is essential to hold the government to account. In other words, there was no national security reason why we couldn't have had this before. It was only because Trudeau didn't want the embarrassment before an election. So what did he do then? He collaborated, knowing this, he collaborated with Beijing to buy a vaccine for COVID. Could you imagine if the deal that Trudeau wanted to sign with Beijing had gone ahead and we had procured China-made vaccines after learning this information? That's what was in this guy's head. And if you think for a minute, because I know there'll be all kinds of excuses while he's not responsible and how could he possibly take ownership of what happens in his government. Let me quote him. He has a document called Open and Accountable Government. And I quote, as head of government, the prime minister has special responsibilities for national security, end quote. It's his responsibility. This is his government's lab. It's not a random university lab. It's the top lab for the prime minister's public health agency. And he is 
exclusively responsible for the machinery of government as Prime Minister of the country. So this is on Justin Trudeau. I will add one last thing. Not only did he cover it up, not only did he try to get a vaccine from China after knowing this, he called a snap election to make sure that the voting would happen before this came out. And what happened in that election? Beijing interfered to help him win it. This is a man who says he admires China's basic communist dictatorship. We cannot trust Justin Trudeau to keep our people and its country safe. We need a strong, conservative, common sense government that will root out foreign interference, protect our critical secrets and our medical research, and stand on guard for our country to keep our people and our nation safe. Thank you. On, on arrive, Ken, there is a r report by CTV that says that there is a man who runs a company that got $8 million for arrive, Ken. He is still employed by the Department of National Defense. What does that say to you? It says to me that there's no accountability. Now that we know this, this individual should be immediately fired, and there should be an immediate police investigation of his conduct and that of the company with which he's associated and a broader inquiry within the public service about how this contracting was allowed to go on for so long. On the Winnipeg lab, on the Winnipeg lab, do you think the National Microbiology Lab infectious disease researchers should be allowed to do any collaborations with China at this point? No. Can you explain why? Because we know that uh, in this instance that, uh, there, that our highest placed, most sensitive lab was infiltrated by people who collaborated with the People's Liberation Army, who did not reveal any of their ongoing partnerships with the, the regime in Beijing, uh, and uh, who transferred materials from our most critical lab containing our most dangerous viruses over to Beijing and, to, and worked in collaboration with the, the Wuhan lab. So I don't think this is the kind of collaboration we want. We should be collaborating with like-minded democracies that we can trust, not those that want to attack our interests. Do you, do you, do you, do you, so as Mr. Polyev has said, uh, the government's own documents have confirmed that the national security breaches at the Winnipeg lab represent a very serious and credible danger to Canada and a very and a realistic and credible threat to Canada's economic security. As Mr. Polyab has also said, in the government's own founding document, Open and Accountable Government, the Prime Minister alone is responsible for the machinery of government, and the Prime Minister has a special responsibility for national security. It is clear in these documents that the, that the Prime Minister failed in his responsibility to protect the security of Canadians against a very serious threat against this country and its citizens. It's also clear that the Prime Minister failed to ensure that the machinery of government was set up in a way to ensure that these kinds of things did not happen at the Winnipeg lab. In addition to all of this, what is equally appalling is the cover-up. It was three years ago that we asked for these documents. In fact, as Mr. Polyev has said, the House of Commons and its two committees issued four orders for the production of these documents three years ago. It was four years ago that these scientists were marched out of the lab in Winnipeg. And during these last four years, the government covered it up. It initially, as you will recall, tried to punt this to the ENSICOP committee. And then uh, it took the speaker to court. And then it actually created this ad hoc committee of four MPs and three judges that took another year and a half to review these documents. So this has been a massive cover-up on part of this government, and it's particularly appalling in light of the fact that this is a government that came to office promising greater transparency. We have seen anything but. In fact, it has been said by information commissioners that we've seen a reversal in transparency on part of this government, probably one of the worst reversals in modern government, Canadian government history. We have also have a government here that promised to respect Parliament. And here we are, three years after we asked for these documents, and finally starting to get some of the truth behind what happened. And so this is a damning indictment on this Prime Minister, his management of the Government of Canada, and his lack of respect for our democracy. Good morning, everyone. Canadians need to know that two scientists with deep relationship with many institutions 
inside the People's Republic of China infiltrated Canada's top microbiology lab in Winnipeg. While there, People's Liberation Army scientists from the Academy of Military Medical Scientists, which is charged with biology-enabled weapons, were able to gain a secret security clearance which gave them unfettered and unsupervised access to the laboratory and to the computer-based science network. This is a travesty and a breach of security at the highest levels that cannot be tolerated. Aside from all this, we know very clearly that the Trudeau Liberal government wanted to cover this up, denying four orders of parliament, taking the speaker to court, and calling an unnecessary election during COVID, which of course resulted in us understanding now very clearly that there was Chinese interference in that election. Canadians need to know also that this was not a national security threat cover-up. It was a cover-up to avoid political embarrassment. This is an embarrassment to our country, and Canadians also need to know who is going to be held responsible in this sunny ways government. Who covered this up? Who was at the head from a political nature? Why did they cover up for so long? And when will someone, such as a minister or a prime minister, be held responsible on behalf of all Canadians? I thank you. Just one, one more thing we just want to add to this is as we actually look at this and you think about uh, the documents that we all took a lot of time last night going through and the cover-up that uh, we've been going under for the last three years because of Justin Trudeau and his corruption and his cover-ups, we've got to remember that in, in, if you look at page 97, paragraph number 5 in the CSIS document, it says, and this is where this gets really critical here when it comes to our national security, the Academy of Military Medical Sciences of the People's Liberation Army of the People's Republic of China um, and has offensive chemical and biological weapons capabilities. As per China's key national research and development priorities is to support national defense research projects by transforming the results of basic civil research into military applications. So although you have uh, Justin Trudeau not at all concerned about our national security, more concerned about his political embarrassments, us as conservatives under uh, Pierre Polyev want to make sure that we continue to go out there and support our national security and make sure that this never happens again. We don't know exactly what uh, materials, technology, viruses and other uh, um, biological things that are in that lab were actually turned over to the PRC and to the People's Liberation Army. We know that they're interested in weaponization and so we cannot have these biological weapons created in China and used against us here in Canada or our allies. You want to talk about an embarrassment, this is a national embarrassment, it's an international embarrassment, and our own national security is at risk. Let me just say that this is a national security failure on the highest level. The head of the unit at the Winnipeg lab responsible for pathogens was collaborating with the foremost expert in the PLA with respect to biodefense and bioterrorism. And through it all, the Prime Minister was less than transparent with Canadians and he covered it up. And the question is, who bears responsibility? And the answer to that question is very simple. Justin Trudeau bears responsibility. The buck stops with Justin Trudeau. As Prime Minister, he has special responsibilities for national security. And he has a lot to answer for, for this colossal failure to his watch. <laughs> Devrait-il y avoir un droit de retrait pour le Québec, l'Alberta et toutes les autres provinces euh, avec pleine compensation et sans conditions sur l'assurance médicaments? Premièrement, il faut reconnaître que c'était notre promesse euh, des né du gouvernement néo-démocrate euh, libéral. Euh, on, va, on verra ce que ça va livrer. Ils ont promis un grand programme de 80 milliards de dollars pour rendre euh, le logement abordable et Justin Trudeau a doublé le coût de logement. Donc, on, nous verrons ce que le programme va livrer. Pas juste des belles paroles, des photo-ops, 
et uh, des, uh, des ententes entre des deux, deux politiciens incompétents. So Est-ce qu'il uh, uh, devrait pouvoir être, se retirer? The question was so. The, so the question was on uh, Mexican visas. We, the Harper government, put in the visa for Mexico, which uh, all but eliminated false asylum claims from that country. Uh, when Prime Minister Harper left office, there were 250 asylum claims per year from Mexico. Uh, after Justin Trudeau got in and lifted the visa requirement, that rose to 17,000, of which only 11 percent were actually found to be legitimate asylum claimants. The rest were presumably illegitimate. And as a result, we have the social services and our housing market completely overwhelmed with false claimants. We called First of all, the, the visa never should have been lifted by Trudeau. He's the one that caused the chaos in our immigration system. He and he alone is to blame for it. We called for him to reverse his mistake a month ago. Finally, he has backed down to me on that demand, uh, and I only wish that he had done it sooner. I should do that in French, en français. Uh, évidemment, le gouvernement Harper a mis en place l'obligation de visa pour le Mexique ce qui a presque éliminé le, les faux demandeurs d'asile. Euh, en fait, il y avait seulement 250 demandeurs d'asile dans la dernière année de Stephen Harper. Il y a maintenant 17 000 demandeurs d'asile. 17 000. Vous pouvez regarder les chiffres vous-même. Et dans 11 sont trouvés légitime. Donc, l'autre 89% ne sont pas. Ça a débordé le système de services sociaux et de logements, surtout au Québec. Le Québec est à un point de rupture à cause de l'incompétence de Justin Trudeau en ce qui concerne notre système de l'immigration. C'est pour ça qu'on a demandé il y a un mois que Justin Trudeau rétablisse le visa qu'il a enlevé. Et finalement, il a, il a cédé à la pression conservatrice pour remettre le visa. Il n'aurait jamais fait cette erreur et maintenant les Canadiens payent, en paient le prix. Il n'en vaut pas le coup. Will you dismantle Pharmacare? Justin Trudeau is Pharmacare. not worth the cost. Will you, Will you dismantle Pharmacare? Thank you very much. Will you dismantle Pharmacare if you are...